Voice. Voice? What voice? I heard it first in Ockard's office, and then again, just... It's moving. I think it's going to kill. Kill? Harry, wait! Not so fast! Like spiders. What's that? The Chamber of Secrets has been opened. Enemies of the air, beware. It's written in blood. Oh, wow. It's Vulture's cat. Enemies of the air, beware. You'll be next, mudbloods. What's going on here? Oh, good sir. Everyone will proceed to the dormitories immediately. Everyone except you three. Ravenclaws, follow me. She's not dead, Argus. She has been petrified. Ah, thought so. So unlucky I wasn't there. I know exactly the counter curse that could have spared her. But how she's been petrified, I cannot say. If I might, Headmaster, perhaps Potter and his friends were simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. However, the circumstances are suspicious. I, for one, don't recall seeing Potter at dinner. I'm afraid that's my doing, Severus. You see, Harry was helping me answer my fan mail. That's why Ron and I went looking for him, Professor. We just found him when he said... Yes, Miss Granger? When I said I wasn't hungry. We were heading back to the common room when we found Mrs Norris. Innocent until proven guilty, Severus. My cat has been petrified. I want to see some punishment! We will be able to cure her, Argus. As I understand it, Madame Sprout is a very healthy growth of mandrakes. When matured, a portion will be made which will revive Mrs. Norris. And in the meantime, I strongly recommend caution to all. Ah, oh, there you are, Harry. Hermione and Ron are already at my death day party. Come on, Harry, you don't want to be late. Yes, I'll see you in the dungeons. Be quick. You don't want to miss the celebrations. Blimey, Harry. Where have you been? We've been waiting ages for you. Let's go, Harry. Glad you couldn't make it, Harry. May I recommend the mouldy bread and the stinking salmon? Watch out for Peeves, Harry. He's in one of his mischievous moods. Feel free to mingle, Harry. Ron and Hermione are around here somewhere. Happy Death Day, Nick. I think Ron has a present for you. I'll go and tell him to bring it over. <laughs> Peeves, 
dive down behind the table, Harry. Use your knockback jinx to get the prison back. <laughs> Please, give Ron back his present. The voice was growing fainter, and Harry was sure it was moving away, moving upwards. He began to run, his stomach lurching. Something was shining on the wall ahead. Harry approached slowly, squinting through the darkness. Mrs. Norris, Filch's cat, was hanging by her tail from a torch bracket. She was as stiff as a board, her eyes wide and staring. Foot-high words had been daubed on the wall above the petrified cat. Harry shuddered as he read them. The Chamber of Secrets has been opened. Enemies of the air, beware. Before Harry could leave, several people appeared in the corridor. And then Draco Malfoy shouted out to everyone gathered. Enemies of the air, beware! You'll be next, mudbloods! Professor Dumbledore calmed everyone down and sent them all to bed. Ron reckoned that he had an idea who the heir of Slytherin was, and both he and Harry went to meet Hermione in the library. What was that? What was what? That voice! It was coming from over there! Come on! What's going on? <sighs> Enemies of the air, beware! You'll be next, mudbloods. She's been petrified, but how, I cannot say. And now, I would like everybody to please return to their dormitories. There's nothing else to see here. Come on, Harry. Professor Dumbledore's right. There's nothing more to see here. Everyone at Hogwarts was disturbed by the attack on Mrs. Norris and the mysterious words scrawled on the wall. Rumors and speculations spread. Hermione in particular was especially affected. Ron and Harry became sure that she was up to something, but whatever it was, she remained tight-lipped. Hmm. Hmm. Huh? 